In order to model the arches, we can start with very simple geometry. And we're going to use a simple plane to begin with. And using two-dimensional geometry will make certain things a little bit easier. And in fact, we can use two-dimensional geometry for other parts of this building as well. For example, for the wall down here in the background and for the top floors. But starting with two-dimensional geometry for the arches will be particularly useful because we have a lot of detail here. And using a simple plane as a starting point will make it much easier to prepare the mesh and add the geometry that we need to create those details. And once we've done that, we can turn that two-dimensional object into a three-dimensional object and extrude all those details. So let's add a plane to the scene and I'm going to change the orientation to minus Z and we won't be needing any width segments or height segments so I'm going to reduce those to one. And now we can make that plane object editable and I'm going to use axis center to put the axis at the bottom of our plane. And then we can use snapping to move this plane to the top of the stairs. So hit P and you can undock the snapping menu if you want to enable snapping. We need to be able to snap to edges here. So let's move that plane object up and snap it to the top of the stairs. I'm going to switch off snapping again and now we can scale the plane to about here and let's maybe do 2300 for the width and because we're going to use this as a basis for some of the other parts of the building as well I'm going to scale this up all the way to the top right under the roof here and if you want to scale this a little more exactly you could switch off the X and Z axes and then just left click and drag in the viewport like so. So now we've created a very simple block out of the entire front of the building and we're going to split off parts of this plane object and use those as a starting point to model the components of the building like the arches and the top floors. So let's go to edge mode and I'm going to select the edges on the left and on the right and let's use connect points edges to create an additional edge here which I'm going to move down a bit to about where the ceiling starts. In fact I'm going to move this up a little further so we have enough room to add the geometry that we need for those grooves. And now we can go to polygon mode, select the bottom polygon and split this off which will create a new object here. So this is our facade base and this one will be the arch. And I'm going to hide the facade and the stairs for now. Now a single polygon is not enough to define all the areas where these openings need to be so we have to add a bit more geometry to define those areas. So let's go back to edge mode here and select the top and bottom edges. I'm going to use, where is it, edge cut here to create five new edges. So we need uh, five subdivisions here and we need to scale these edges a bit so let's do five subdivisions and I'm using edge cut interactively in the viewport so I can hold down the shift key and drag and I'm trying to line these edges up with the center of the other arches here and if I zoom in yeah it's not quite accurate so let's undo and try again So that looks a little better. 
And of course, these five new edges are not enough yet to define the areas where the arches need to be. So we have to add more edges to define the borders of these openings here. So I'm going to select these five new edges here and let's use the bevel tool and create the edges that we need. I'm going to do an offset of let's say 150 and because I don't want to lose the edges at the center of the arches we're going to need those. I'm going to bring up the subdivision of the bevel tool to 1. So now we've defined the areas where the openings need to be. And next I'm going to prepare the object that we need to cut that hole or the opening into that plane object. And we're going to use a bool object for that. And we're also going to use two-dimensional geometry as a starting point. So I'm going to add a disk to the scene, change the orientation to minus Z, and we won't be needing any segments, so let's get rid of those. And let's move the disk up to about here. And right now it's still too small, so we need to increase the outer radius. So let's see. Actually, 195 looks good, so let's go with that. The bool object will not only help us to make sure that we can create a nice and even curvature up here, we can also use this disk to prepare the information that we need to create those grooves up here. So in order to get that information we have to increase the rotation segments of that disk because we need one edge on this disk for each of the edges that we're going to need for those grooves. So let's see, we have to increase the rotation segments quite a bit. And I think 138 looks pretty good. So you can see we're getting a pretty good match up here and here and down here we're off a little bit, but that's okay. So now we can make this disk object editable and I'm going to use the plane cut tool and let's change the mode to remove part B and I'm going to snap the knife tool to this point here which is the one that is closest to the edge where that curved section starts. And If I hold down shift and left click and drag I can create a straight horizontal cut. If I let go of the left mouse button the cut will be confirmed and the bottom of the object will be removed. Now in order to keep things simple I'm going to switch to polygon mode and select all the polygons and I'm going to melt these polygons into a single n-gon. Let's go to point mode and remove the points on this bottom edge here. And now we can select our edge down here and use quick extrude. So hold down control, left click and drag on the y-axis to extrude a new edge. And we're going to move this below the other object a little bit. Now in order to be able to cut that opening in there, our new object here needs to have some volume. So I'm going to go to polygon mode, select all the polygons, use D for extrude, and I want to create caps here. So let's extrude this forward a bit, go to model mode, and let's move this object back a bit and make it intersect with our plane object. Now you can see that our cookie cutter, let's rename this, is a little bit too wide. It needs to fit in between this edge here and this edge here. So what we can do to fix that is select the arch and maybe go to edge mode. And I'm going to select these edges here. And you can see these are 300 centimeters on the x-axis. So let's change 
our cookie cutter to 300 on the x-axis. As far as the arches are concerned, we don't really need all that geometry, so uh, let's get rid of some of the polygons here. Just going to select the points over here and delete them, and we don't need the points over here. Before I cut that opening into that flat object, it's probably a good idea to add some more geometry. So for example, we can add all the information that we need to be able to create those horizontal grooves later. And in order to do that, I'm going to use the plane cut tool again. And this time I'm going to switch the mode back to cut all. And holding down the shift key and left clicking and dragging, I'm going to create an edge here. And because all of these stones all the way to the top seem to have the same height, uh, we can use some of the features of the plane cut tool to get the other edges as well. For example, we can increase the number of cuts. Let's do three for now and we can change the spacing. So in this case we have to go negative and if I zoom in I can fine-tune this a little easier. Let's bring this down to minus 71 looks good. And now we can increase the number of cuts a little more and we need a total of 10 cuts here. And of course we need more geometry because we also need edges for the bottom of all of these stones. So again, I'm using the plane cut tool and I'm creating a cut maybe here. And because we still have our settings from before, we're going to create all of the edges that we need here. We don't need all of the geometry that we just created. For example, up here, I'm going to do the top of the pillar as a separate object. So the arches, will be one piece of geometry, but I think it's a little easier to keep the top of the pillar as a separate object. So we don't really need the edges up here. So what I'm going to do is double click on one of these edges to select the entire loop and holding down shift, we can double click on one of these edges to select this loop and then we can just dissolve these edges. And you can see the geometry of our cookie cutter and the plane object is not matching. Let's go ahead and fix that. So I'm going to select our cookie cutter again and let's select the edges up here. Now in order to be able to snap this edge to this edge here, we need to move the object axis to the bottom edge. and. One way to do that is to enable Axis and then go to the Move tool and just left click on this edge and this will temporarily move the object axis to this edge here. And now let's switch off Enable Axis, let's switch on Snapping and now we can move these edges up and snap them to the edge of our other object here. So now we're all set to cut that hole into our flat object and we're going to continue modeling the arches in the next video.